Welcome to the History of Alaska one-on-one sessions. I'm your host, Junior Francis, and um, I'm delighted to remind you that this series celebrates and aims to pro promote the Skia, Rocksteady, and Vintage Reggae scene in Southern California and beyond through insightful conversations with legends and modern-day talent, including many behind the scenes. A lot of people have been working behind the scenes, so we want to thank them. Additionally, whether you listen to this podcast series or uh, watch us on YouTube, many thanks for your support. Our guest uh, on this episode is co-creator of the Supernova International Scare Festival. I have the enormous opportunity and pleasure to talk to none other than Tim Receiver, who founded this festival with his amazing wife, April. Tim, how is everything going? Everything is going great. We're in the home stretch for the festival now. Yes, thanks for having uh, me. Yeah, it's hard to imagine because I, uh, on occasion, I, you know, would help promoters with festivals. And for me, it's challenging. It's hard to imagine how challenging this one is for you. Yeah, you know, and this this one is the first festival that we're doing outside of a brewery. So we're, we're actually at uh, a place called Fort Monroe. It's right on the beach, uh, but there's not a lot of infrastructure there. Mm -hmm. So we've got more challenges than normal, but I think we're going to get it all together. Of course, of course, of course. So we're going to dive into uh, the incredible lineup of, uh, for this year's festival, uh, September 14 to the 17th, as you mentioned, in Fort Monroe, Virginia. Uh, but uh, first, let's get some background on you, where you are, were born, and so forth and so on. Yeah, uh, I'm originally from Indiana and in the middle of the country. Uh, I've been living in Virginia, though, for 20 years uh, after being in the military. Um, worked for the, the U.S. government, U.S. State Department, uh, worked for nonprofits for almost 10 years, and, and now work on the side working on uh, hostage rescue um, with um, a group called Hostage Aid Worldwide as a, a part-time gig, and then uh, trying to make Supernova my, my full-time gig. And um, yeah, it's a lot of work. Mm -hmm. this, I'm just curious, what exactly is Hostage Rescue? So this is, a, it's a group called Hostage Aid Worldwide, and they work on getting hostages uh, released around the world. So uh, coordinating with governments and organizations and, and put, you know, putting pressure on people to get hostages out. And it was, it was founded by a group of hostages uh, about three years ago. That's a big job, Tim. Yeah, it's a, it's a big job and uh, very important. And you know, there's people have been languishing in prisons for, you know, 10 or more years in some of these countries. So. And what are some of the challenges you face? Oh, with, with that, it's, um, mm -hmm. yeah, I mean, there's there's people that have dual nationalities, you know, like multiple nationalities. So they get arrested in Iran and they're Iranian American. It's, you know, the Iranians will say it's, you know, they're they're arresting, a, you know, a, an Iranian citizen, you know, and Americans will say it's an American, you know, it's like, it's politics, like almost everything, but uh, yeah, yeah, just Meanwhile, they're a, playing with a lot of challenges. Mm -hmm. Meanwhile, somebody's life is involved. Yeah. And, you know, like something like uh, hostages too, it's like, you, you we, I don't know if you remember the Brittany Griner being arrested in Russia. Of course. You know, but something like that, you get a, um, you know, a celebrity and it gets a lot of attention, but they're, you know, they're, like dozens and dozens of people that, you know, have been held for, you know, the media doesn't give them that spotlight. So but sadly you know, and, and unfortunately. So uh, let's talk about the festival. And uh, not that, you know, uh, rescuing hostages isn't really important, but essentially we said we will talk about the festival and the lineup. Sure. One of a kind festival, again, set to take place uh, September the 14th. So we're approximately a month and a few days out, right? We are, yeah. Mm -hmm. like, uh, I think five weeks as of Thursday. Mm -hmm. So I want to ask your earliest memory. When did you discover Skia or Skia discovered you? Yeah, that, that's a great question. Um, I, I was in Japan like in the early 90s. I lived there for three years and like found Ska there. Um, was just at a record store. I got some records from a, 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 it was a Ska and punk record store and he, he gave me some Buddha glow skulls, some scatolites and uh, Operation Ivy. And I took them home and, you know, fell in love, came back and bought a whole bunch more. And uh, here we are today, like putting together a, a multi-day festival. And that's sort of baptism began in Japan. And what, when, when exactly was that again? Uh, 93 to 96, I was in Tokyo. Mm -hmm. Right. Serving 
As in the military. military. I was in, yeah, U.S. Air Force in the, in the military. What town were you in? I, I was in uh, close to Tachikawa, like outside of Tokyo. Mm-hmm. So we would be downtown Tokyo and uh, Shinjuku and I don't know, people, people, there's just some <laughs> some great neighborhoods and records and uh, clubs and things in, in that part of Tokyo. So essentially, we have to say thank you to Japan for your <laughs> The and I think we're, you know, fun. we're full circle this year with Tokyo Scout Paradise coming. Yeah. So yes. it's a bucket list for me. Yeah. And why pick this location for the uh, for the festival? We, we, we've moved it around a little bit. Um, my wife and I live closer to the D.C. area. So we had it up there for several years. And then we moved um, down to Hampton, Virginia, like Fort Monroe is this, this beautiful place right on the Chesapeake Bay. Mm-hmm. And we just saw it as a, a beautiful canvas for the festival. Like right. people, you know, we're going to have it right on the water, like on the stages, the bands will be seeing the waves breaking, you know, I mean, you, you're used to it in L.A. all the time. Like, you know, Virginia is not, you know, we don't have a lot of festivals on the water too much out here. So, you know, thinking that people can go to the beach and listen to the music from the beach and, you know, it's a historic fort. So it's it's got uh, old lighthouses and moats and even a pet cemetery at the, you know, at the fort. So it's um, a cool place for for people to come and visit and bring families. Right. If I'm not mistaken, 2014, the festival made its debut. It did. Yeah, we, we brought it to Fredericksburg, Virginia uh, the first time. So it's been almost 10 years. Mm-hmm. What was the first artist you booked and why? Uh, the first artist we booked um, was actually um, somebody you know very well, Chris Murray. Um, I was, I, he was touring like on the East coast and he was looking for house parties. And I said, Oh man, I'd love Chris Murray's my favorite. You know, he's like a, he's a great guy, you know, he, he's involved in everything and, and just, um, you know, a lovely human being. And so we booked a house party and then people started RSVPing. They were coming, it got like way too big. And so we went to a brewery and we asked the brewery, like, can we do a show here? And, um, the, the brewery ended up being that we had a great turnout and then the brewery ended up letting us do a festival there for a few years. Wow. So Chris Murray. And Chris again, Murray. So that was 2014. That was like the um, fall of 2013. So it was a one-off show. And then we decided like, this is a lot of, you know, we're having a lot of fun with this. Like, can we do it as a one day festival? Mm-hmm. So, so of, we all Chris the, Murray back. of all the artists that you have booked over the years, uh, which one, which performance exceeded uh, expectation? Oh, I, if you were my, to pick one. Yeah, I would say my my favorite so far has been Derek Morgan in 2017. Mm-hmm. Like he, um, when he when he arrived to to the show, like he, you know, I don't know, you've 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 talked to him over the years. Like he's got a, a bad back, you know, so he doesn't get around too too well, and he was having a lot of trouble that weekend. And so he was down the whole weekend, really kind of laying on his back. And um, he got to the show and he got up there and just it was like magic, you know, like no problems. Like you wouldn't know he had any trouble at all. And he just delivered an incredible performance. And yeah, I still like find it amazing that, you know, he went from like kind of bedridden at that time to like, you know, no cane, you know, like he just goes at it and, you know, just wowed the audience. Yeah, I'm not surprised you said that because with uh, a friend, including uh, Mr. Cole, a good friend, and another friend helped to put together a concert at the Fonda. And I remember I had gone back to the Fonda, the guy said, I remember you from just some years ago. He said, you remember that blind man, uh, what happened to him? And there were like two festivals with about five and five, nine artists. And you just remember what? It died. Uh-huh. <laughs> I, I just I, I was actually just in Jamaica like a few months ago and we went over to his house and um saw him and Nelly and the family out there. So mm-hmm. it was good to good to see them at their home and yeah, he's they're both lo- lovely family. Right. Any disappointment in terms of artists who didn't deliver the uh are delivered below expectation. <laughs> I don't think I'm gonna go there. <laughs> but I'm quite sure there have been a couple, right? <laughs> yeah. Well, you, like the I think the problem I've had, like not not the last year we recorded everything, we live streamed it last time. So I've been, I was able to see all of 2021. But the challenge I've always had is like I'm always running around crazy. So I don't I don't get to see the the festival, you know, before. So 
right. I get no no comment before uh, 2021. <laughs> <laughs> right. So this is going to be the largest 2023 edition, the largest uh, featuring 40 acts or thereabout, right? Could be yep. more. Mm -hmm. From nine countries. Uh, in, uh, this includes Tokyo Ska Parade, what goes around, comes around. Oh. That started in the idea, started essentially in Japan. Yeah. You have from uh, Jamaica, the likes of Sister Nancy, a stranger Cole. I think I know him. <laughs> He's <laughs> a familiar <California>. name. <laughs> <laughs> Fishbone, Bad Manners from the United Kingdom. The Untouchables, uh, household names here in Southern California. The sure. Pipe Posters, and I think I've left out quite a few countries. Yeah, um, we've got um, Out of Control Army from Mexico, mm -hmm. um, Adesivo from El Salvador. Uh, we've got uh, The Resignators going to play Thursday from Australia. Uh, I'm trying to think of who else we're leaving off. Um, Scap that's well, Scapones are there. What a massive uh, roll call. Yeah, uh, Pannonia All-Star Sky Orchestra from Hungary. Mm-hmm. Um, that might be all the countries i'm trying to think of any other ones but yeah it's 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 a lot um we're, we're dealing with the uh, visa issues right now too and trying to get all them processed and yeah it's uh that's a, that's a big challenge too yes i i was meant to understand that visa price went up is there any truth to that yeah the, well the the visa i know the the P1 visas are going up like they, they were considering taking them up to $1,700 or something like like a four time increase or a three time increase. Mm -hmm. Like right now, though, there's still it's about $1,000 for an artist visa, like with the paperwork and the, the you know, the forms we have to file. So, so we've, the total is how much for one artist? Uh, well, you know, we, we like with um, like Pannonia, like we probably spent like two thousand dollars at least three thousand dollars somewhere in that range on on visa because we need a little bit of support and you know like lawyers to help us kind of navigate and even then it's it's very hard to the process takes a long time like the system is very slow uh for the u.s visa process so you have to for for next year you have to start no i'm guessing yeah we'll, we'll start like earlier next time we didn't get started till march of this year and we got everything in in like June, um, but it's you know with some of these bands it's like a little too late at that point. But we'll see, we'll see. We're we're looking at it right now. We were just talking to everybody today and trying to figure out when to schedule visas at the you know their inter interviews and things. So right. So festivals of many genres and styles are often criticized for not having uh, female artists on the billing. This is definitely not the, <laughs> and uh, is it a conscious effort on your part and the organizers to have so many female artists, Holly Cook, Sister Nancy, uh, Loving Papa, Rude Review, and the list goes on and on and on. There's absolutely positively no room for criticism, no room for doubt. Yeah, it's it's definitely conscious. Um, as we were going through this, we, we actually had more offers out to, we, we had asked um, the selector, uh, the skins, and, you know, we had like more in the pipeline than, you know, some of those didn't work out, but, you know, definitely a a conscious effort as, as is, um, you know, trying to bring Jamaica into every festival that we do and um, trying to have that international mix of bands. Mm -hmm. And it's essentially ska, rock steady, reggae, and the off, uh, offbeat, off. I guess music that, you know, uh, how how can I say it? On the ska, so to speak. Like, In other words, ska is the forerunner for all yeah. the genres that are really yeah. And it, we're, you know, every everything for you know, like it, it's um, it, I think the festival is great. Like people, uh, they appreciate and they accept that you know we'll have Stranger Cole and Suicide Machines on the same festival. You know, and that's okay. And people like respect both of those bands, mm -hmm. you know, and there's such a range there. So, mm -hmm. you know, so there's the, not too many genres like that. So the, the, the group you just mentioned, the name just went, what kind of style? Oh, like Suicide Machines, they're like a ska punk band ska punk. out of Detroit. Yeah. Oh, Detroit, domestically grown. 
Yeah, and like you know, like the Voodoo Glow Skulls and those kind of bands, you know. Mm-hmm. So we've got you know, like with um, the like Friday night, we've got Stranger Cole and Sister Nancy and Fishbone, and you know, all these bands are kind of you know, they're definitely not cookie cutter. They're not identical. It's quite a mix of of you know the genre kind of on display. Mm-hmm. And how do you decide what night to put what acts? So, uh, some of it is when the bands can make it. You know, some of it's been adjusted by you know, like okay, well, you know, Tokyo Scout Paradise they've got this you know other event going on this time, or you know, the sometimes people they run into challenges, so we we shuffle them around. But yeah, it's just trying to get kind of a like a lineup that makes sense for that night. Like the flow makes sense. You know the the level of bands makes sense. You know that's kind of like all. You know, we we're a little heavy on Saturday. We've got Holly Cook and Tokyo Scout Paradise and the Duelers and you know a whole bunch of like it's it's like pretty incredible. But then you know on Sunday it's it's Bad Manners and the Untouchables and the Agrilites and the Buddha Glow Skulls. So it's yeah, just so, trying to get a balance. So in addition to the uh, spectacular on stage performances that we know we can expect from these wide variety of artists artists what else can festival attendees expect well they they can expect um a, you know a festival unlike any other so when they when they show up it's like they can come and go all weekend they can bring their own food in they can bring their own drinks they can go to the beach which is right next to the festival you know and lounge on the beach and come back and forth and you know it's just a, it's a very easy going it's family friendly it's a, a huge area it's in the grass like kids can bring soccer balls and play you know there's camping close by like within walking distance if people wanted to camp mm-hmm. so it's um yeah so for, so for festival goers those who don't bring food is food uh available we know it, it is in abundance it'll be in an abundance yeah we'll have um 15 or 16 food trucks there you know, oh, everything from right. barbecue to vegan to, you know, anything in between and snacks. and. So I'm just curious as to the size of your staff. How many um, yeah. Volunteers. So volunteers, we've got um, right now like 65 to 70 volunteers um, that I we've been, you know, for check in for security, helping us out a little bit um, for, you know, merchandise and, and kind of. Um, everything in between so Mm -hmm. yeah a lot of people have volunteered and it's it's it really really is um it it saves us and even back to 2021 we had doctors and nurses volunteering that had tickets they're doctors and nurses you know like professionals you know volunteering to do temperature checks at the gate you know it's just like something that a small festival like this can't afford you know and people are just stepping up and you know so you really mentioned small. What, what size, uh, how many people you, you are expecting? So we, we are probably like about 3,000 people a day is what we're guessing. Like we're at about 2,200. We've got about 250 band members and we probably will sell that many more tickets to get about to close to 3,000 a day. Mm-hmm. Uh, which legend from Jamaica hasn't played the festival that you'd like to? Uh, oh, oh. You know, I I actually went to Ken Boo's house like a few months ago and was going to ask him like, um, you know, if he could come. He's he's uh, having some some health issues as well. So he's one that I, you know, was just listen to his music all the time. You know, love it. Um, Johnny Osborne's going to be here like the week before uh, Supernova playing a free show in Hampton. So <laughs> looking forward to that. I would love to see if we can get him on sometime. Um, yeah, I don't know. Those are like two big ones for me. So follow up question. How many legends have performed? Because you seem to have a fantastic memory. How many legends have performed at the festival over the um, years? Well, I mean, we've not as many as we would have liked. Um, you know, we would like like Simmer, like not Jamaican, but like Simmer is another one we'd love to get together and bring them in next year. Um, <clears throat> but we've had Doreen Schaefer, like she's played with Western Standard Time um, from from your neighborhood. And um, we've had this, obviously the Scatolites out there. Um, um, 
yeah, I, I'd say like not not as many as you would think, but um, yeah, we've had a few. Mm -hmm. So why is that so? Why hasn't there been more legends? You need help finding them. You seem as if you don't need help. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, so, some of the yeah, like with um, you know, we had some booked in like more booked in like 2021 and things had fallen off with COVID. So some people don't want to travel with that, you know, with that going on, like, um, you know, some people like the ones we really want are kind of getting up in age. So it's, it's harder for them to travel, but you know, that's what we're, we're trying to do for next time is like, make sure like we give people plenty of notice and, you know, see like a Marsha Griffiths is like one I would love to, you know, we, we had a hard time finding her this year. Like we'd love to, we would love to invite her out. Right. You know, cause she lives a lot in uh, Florida and yeah, in, mostly in Florida from uh, what I was reliably informed. Yeah. yeah. And um, yeah, that, you know, that's, that's somebody that uh, we'd love to have on in the future for sure. Right. Right. Well, I think I'm about to make way for my good friend and producer, Eric Kohler. He has some further questions. Thank you, Junior. Hey, Tim. Good to see you. Hey, Eric. How are you doing? Doing great. How are you doing? Doing awesome. Yeah. Thanks for thanks again for doing this. And um, I'm excited and envious. Uh, last last year, uh, I've I've been familiar with your festival over the years, but last year especially, seeing all the real time photos and posts and and, mm -hmm. and talking with with friends and people from the scene who went, um, definitely jealous. And uh, Junior and I both tried, and we talked several times about trying to get out there this year. Just it didn't work out for a few a few different reasons, but but next year next year we're gonna try again. So one of these years you'll see us. Um, but congratulations too, just on you know a hugely successful um, uh, in many ways, right? I mean you could be successful monetarily, which I, I'm sure is the goal, but but successful in other ways too. And and just uh, I love the way that you curate it. So um, yeah, kudos to you on that. Thank you. Uh, yeah. So just a few uh, additional questions here. So. Were you inspired by any other festivals or promoters um, or or maybe shadowed or given advice or anything noteworthy along those lines over the years? Um, I mean, I, I grew up with the, the not, not maybe not grew up, but like spent my 20s with the the Vans Warped Tour and just, yeah. the you know, like like the ethos with all that and like all the, you know, the, the artists just kind of mingling with the crowds and, yeah. you know, kind of all, you know, that's what I always love, like no egos and, you know, people, they're going to play at different times of the day. They're not going to complain about it, you know, and that's, you know, we, we've done the same thing. Like we put people on early that probably should have been on like at the end of the night, you know, <laughs> and kind of mix it up a little bit just to get, yeah. you know, some of it's to get people out there early and, you know, get crowds to see other bands and, you know, but I think that's, you know, it's like a more, probably more punk rock than ska, yeah, you know, yeah. kind of driving it. Yeah, and shout out to Kevin Lyman and Vans Warped Tour. And yeah, I love what you're saying because it's something special, uh, or a lot of special things, I should say, about watching and seeing artists watch other bands, right? And having those artists jump up on stage and make a surprise appearance or planned appearance. But and I know that that's happened over the years at your festival, um, which I which I truly love. Um, and maybe that is one of these answers. But but what all do you feel sets Supernova? apart from other ska festivals yeah i think you know a lot of it is like the multi-generational piece right. to it you know like like you'll have you know like the you know the i i love all the you know there's there's the kind of the shows with with stranger cole and you you'll get a nice mix of of a crowd there mm -hmm. you know and you've got the steady 45 you know like you, you get like those kind of like interactions that you know, I think for especially the younger people coming up, like they're seeing Derek Morgan on the stage and they're seeing Stranger Cole. Yeah. And they'll remember those people like, you know, like it'll carry it forward a little bit that it's like real, you know, Absolutely. like they didn't get to see Alton Ellis or they didn't get to see, you know, these other artists like back in the day. So it's yeah. not as, you know, they don't they don't um, maybe uh, relate to it as much. Yeah. But they saw Stranger Cole and they could take that forward. They saw Sister Nancy do this thing and you know, and it's like, and, the, you know, these are kids that are listening to Bad Operation and, you know, sure. things like that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And along those lines, too, hopefully this is something that Junior and I and, and, and a few promoters out here 
um, I've really tried to stress, you know, over the years, I mean, and, and you and Junior talked about this, the legends are not getting any younger. We've had a number of them pass over the, uh, this year alone, and just recently um, from uh, Clarendonians, right. Um, yeah. A number of Lester them passed, Sterling, Lester Sterling, Sterling, right, Sterling. over the years. And so, you know, it's super important to, to see these legends when promoters do bring them to town. And Lord then, Creator. Right, Lord Creator recently. Ooh, um, yeah. but and, and, and there's also something very special to your point too about having um domestically grown musicians and backing bands right work with these legends you mentioned steady 45s i mean they're 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 going to be back in the pioneers out here yeah he's working on this october and so um yeah who who else um so who's going to back stranger call on your show is it uh prize fighters it's going to be eastern standard time oh sorry eastern standard time right 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 yes okay yeah and those poor guys, they they volunteered to back a whole bunch of bands. And then somehow in the shuffle, like everybody got put on to Friday. So Dr. Ringding and Stranger Cole and Sister Nancy, their own set. And then I know I'm missing somebody, but it's like I, I had I spaced it all out for them, but they're gonna be so tired <laughs> at the end of that night. <laughs> They're gonna be just like a truly Jamaican band, right? And and see seeing <laughs> seeing just play a wedding for fighter on the back a bunch of artists right in a row. Um and then and then who backed you might have touched on this, but who backed Derek Morgan uh, uh when he played? Eastern Standard Time. <laughs> well, I don't know yeah. if you see a pattern here. <laughs> yeah, yeah, well, they're and they're they're incredible. Uh yeah, yeah. Uh, absolutely. Um when did the festival go from one day to two day and then the three day? Yeah, it took four days now. Four days <laughs> My now. wife is like, yeah, she's ready to no be more. done with. <laughs> um, we did um, we, like the first day, like the first year was like 2014. It was one day. We we rebranded it in 2015 to Virginia Scott Fest, and it was two days. And then we went to uh, two days in 2017 and 2018, and it was the supernova at that point. And then with COVID. We, we we love the fact like when we canceled the festival in 2020 like nobody canceled their tickets like they're like well we'll keep on the tickets like don't worry and so we were kind of between that and we did a virtual festival right. like we were really touched with with all that outpouring of of love that we said we'll, we'll just you know we'll, we'll foot the bill for like a friday show for free for everybody and do that you know and so everybody showed up on friday we had a great crowd you know so it's like oh that's great and so the city had a grant for expanding out a festival and we were like, well, maybe we do like a community night on Thursday. Like there's some bands in town, you know, we've got uh, westbound train was, you know, already going to play. So it's like westbound train is going to be there. Pannonia was going to be in town. Um, Grace of Spades, a DJ out of New York right. and, um, you know, missing somebody, but anyway, we're just like, we'll just do a, open up the doors. We'll pressure test all the systems, you know, and then just, Kind of have a relaxing night with people, make right. it and make it free. Yeah. So, so the first the first year that you did the Thursday night was is it this? Is it this, sorry? This is this year. is the first time we're doing probably the first, the first and last time we'll do a Thursday night. <laughs> <laughs> I think th like three nights is probably like enough of, of a chore. I'm I'm sure. Yeah. So so when so when COVID, so had you uh, you had already put tickets on sale. Had you announced? The, I can't remember this. You, did you announce the lineup already when 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 we were in that March time period when COVID was getting bad? You had yeah, already we we announced it the like the fall before. Okay. So we had um, Pep Cat was the headliner, and that's right. You know, yep. We had most of Saturday and Sunday like announced, and when yep. everything just kind of you know shut down. Right. So you so you encouraged fans to hold on to their tickets, and you and you made good. And you came back in. 20 21 21 yeah. okay yeah right. september yeah and how many of the artists that were on the original lineup did most of them stick around most of them we we lost four or five like the international audience uh, you know right. artists the right. i know planet smashers and dr ringding and there was like a couple others that, that had to drop out because of visa issues yeah 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 i know that's and you and junior touched on that but that's becoming <laughs> increasingly difficult i mean we, we talked about some of the uk artists and how difficult it is to you know and and, and cost prohibitive you know to, to get them out here too it's tough it, it is it's it's really tough and then just the 
it's a black box too. So you'll do all this work. You'll like, you'll spend months on it, like get it all together, put it in. And it's like, we received it like, great. When are you going to be done with it? Like, no, <laughs> you know, no idea. So you're just kind of, you know, in a holding pattern and stressing out until, you know, it comes through. Yeah, no, it's true. Um, the, so, so what areas or states do you primarily draw from? Um, and, and what international countries? So the, I was, I was just looking at the map today and it, and it's mostly like the, you know, we're heavy on the East coast, like Virginia, DC, like Philadelphia, New York, like right. Baltimore, all the way kind of up the, up um, the coast. yeah, I, I think we've got outside of North Dakota and somebody was touching Wyoming and North Dakota. Like we've got coverage from every state or something coming in including Alaska and Hawaii. So shout out to Michelle Scott from Hawaii. Nice. <laughs> but in, in, in some years, though, I see LA has been well represented. I see lots of friends. Yeah, we there. know a number of folks mm -hmm. from LA yeah. who come on out there. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, and there, there's a good crowd. Like we're there's a big bubble over over, over LA for sure. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. It, it, um, they, international countries, um, it, it's most like the UK is, is pretty heavy. Sure. You know, cool. but when I say heavy, it's probably, you know, 15 or 20 people are coming. That's a lot. Um, a few Germans, like I think there's people coming from Singapore and Austria, and you know, all Canada and Mexico for sure. But and maybe maybe this year from Japan, right? Or at least maybe some Japanese Americans uh, more more so will turn out for Tokyo Scout, right? Yeah, we just did a big promo reel for them today to to push out. So nice. Yeah, we'll we'll see if we can get they they've been outstanding, like helping us get the word out. Yeah, and, yeah, I love those guys. And they announced. Two other U.S. shows. Well, they're coming out here to the Grove, um, Garden, Garden, Grove. Garden Apple and Garden Grove. Oh, the, the, oh yeah, I saw that email. Yeah. Oh, and uh, one in New York with Fishbone. Right there we go. Yeah, that, that that'll be a good one. Um, Tim, when Junior asked earlier, I just want to follow up on one question. When he asked about, um, in addition to the amazing live performances on stage, what else can fans expect? I, I know that you the um, uh. Uh, Aaron Carnes and the Indefense of Sky are going to be out there, right, with their podcast. I think they're they're going to be doing something. Any other ancillary, or other um, uh, events or uh, non music related that, that's going to be happening? Uh for for that weekend, um, we've got a couple after parties, like yeah. Against All Authority and Westbound Train, uh, yeah. Loving Poppers, Hans Gruber, and and uh, some DJs um, that'll be playing. Um, for the weekend itself like it's um like we're on this historic fort from the the after the war of 1812 so this big giant stone fort with you know i was telling junior about the you know there's footbridges and a moat around it and it's like medieval it's it's really <laughs> cool edgar Allan poe served there in the military you know so it's this cool place and like people have been coming out and just scootering around the fort and little nice. bridges you can ride over and like Jay Navarro from the Suicide Machines, and you cool. know, he's been they they bring out their scooters, and everybody just kind of you know takes that in in the morning. And we're right next to um, the the Chesapeake Bay, so the, there's subs going by. There's dolphins out there. It's you know pretty wow. cool. And, and what has the weather historically been like? The weekend? weather um, last time around it was about um, 85 degrees a day and sunny. Oh, nice. um, we had one torrential rainstorm, but I mean, I'll take it this time. Like it's hurricane season on the East Coast, so I'm, like, knock on wood, is like we, you know, get good weather for all this. Yeah, yeah. I think I have to go. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Let me see if I can move around a couple of things too. Um, touch on the Bad Time Records um, uh, groups that are coming out there. Obviously, they're making a lot of big waves. Junior and I were just talking about Cat mm -hmm. Light, who we're going to be. Um, yeah. reviewing hopefully as well before your festival, but, um, but yeah, talk about that, that those groups. Yeah. I mean, they're, they're doing incredible things at bad time and, you know, we've been following them forever. Like we've been fans of, um, you know, some of these bands before they were those bands, you know, cat bite, <laughs> like, we, you know, we, we, we had uh, the snails playing our very first festival, you know, and, and Tim and, you know, the, like, you know, it's kind of evolved over the years, but yeah kind of keep in touch with them and kill Lincoln. We're, you know, we used to live in the DC area for 20 years. So, you know, have a soft spot. We tried to get them out here last time. So, 
you know, it's good that they could make it, but uh, yeah, Cat Bite, um, Kill Lincoln, Jay Navarro's on their label now. So this will yeah. be the third time Jay Navarro and the Traders has played the festival. I yeah. always love to have them and Bad Operation and We Are the, the Union. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's yeah. It's, yeah. They, um, some of those groups came out here um, earlier this year. Uh, it was a night, right? the night before uh we did stranger cole so we couldn't make it out but um but they packed the place here and um uh, the observatory in uh in, in santa Ana and orange county here so that was a good one um and then you've you've you talked about chris murray being the first booking who who, who were all big fans and friends with chris um talk about some of the other Southern California. Uh, I know this year alone you have a few from from SoCal, but but, but touch on some of the, the highlights of Southern California uh, groups that you've had over the years too. Yeah, um, you know I, I love the Steady Forty Fives. Like yeah. they were out here um, twenty seventeen. Like they're due to come out again, and we, you know, like <laughs> I'd love them to be our West Coast backing. But you know, like we've got like the Eastern Standard Time, but it'd be good to you know spread the love to to them doing such great work. And I mean, and their original stuff is fantastic too. Yeah. Um, the Agri-Lights, they were out here in 2017 as well. And uh, they played a great show with um, Greg Lee. Um, nice. Like he came out and did like just some Hepcat, you know, like a couple songs and it was Agri-Lights and the Pie Taster horn section wow. and, you know, Greg <laughs> Lee, which is like pretty incredible. Yes. And I'm like, oh man, we got to get, we got to get the, you know, get Hepcat out here on the East coast for the first time in forever. And so that was like 2021. Yeah. So, yes. Took a yeah. While. A milestone for sure. Yeah. Um, yeah. Hepcat's always in a, an amazing time. Um, uh, Scatolites you touched on a little while ago. Did they, um, have they played just once over the years or, or have they played, did they played earlier on? Uh, they played once they, um, Ken's been out a couple times, but yeah. they they played in in twenty twenty one. Um, we're gonna have them next year. Nice. Um, nice. Um, with Roy and Yvonne, like they're gonna do some songs with them. I think. Um, I don't think we're we we haven't locked any of that down yet. But that's something we were talking to Ken about, like getting them back out. Nice. Yeah. I, I, when I was over in um, London in in late June, Scatterlights happened to be playing, and of course across the pond they had Ben Gordon with them and. So that was that was mm. an extra treat to feed him with Ben. So, um, so what are your thoughts on the on the the health and vibrancy of of, of ska here in the in the U.S. Because you've seen it, obviously, you having done the festival right since 2014, you've seen probably you know kind of <laughs> peaks and valleys, so to speak, ebbs or flows. Um, but 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 what, what do you think? Uh, maybe coming out of COVID or even 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 just this year alone, what, what are your thoughts? Yeah, I mean, I th I thought like coming out of COVID, like 2021, like we we had so much enthusiasm, like the crowds and the you know, I was seeing all these these tours that were going around, like the tickets were going crazy. You know, it's yeah. like okay, people maybe finally like appreciate live music and maybe they'll support it better than they have been in the past. And I'm I'm you know I, I obviously we've we've got some core followers that are like they're phenomenal. You know, but I think like some of that has like some of the enthusiasm is dried up a little bit. Like we see great crowds for, you know, like the bad time tours. I mean, they're doing something right for sure. Yep. You know, um, I don't know. I don't know. How do you how do you all see it in L.A.? You've got a, like a lot more to to draw from, like a lot, you know, more of yeah. a crowd there. We, we, we talk about that a lot. We talk about it with other, with other friends and musicians and other promoters. You know, it's not looking good yeah it's 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 really hit or miss i mean i think that the um uh general thoughts and and and, and no particular order but i mean interrupters you know are doing massive business right and kudos to them they're, they're working hard and um they've had some amazing opening slots which i think have helped um some radio play and so when they you know toured and played the wiltern in los angeles a, a few months ago when <clears throat> hepcat was opening and that bit of a sound clash on that show as well. Um, you know, the crowd was into it, sold out. You know, the next night, House of Anaheim sold out. So, interrupters, you know, um, again, I think they're kind of in a class by themselves. Um, 
Latin ska shows, you know, mm-hmm. Latin Those ska punk shows always the way to extremely yeah. well here in Los Angeles and SoCal. Um, you know, some of the uh, traditional ska shows and, and, and bands, you know, do do well. You know, I, I think it. Um, I think it's also really tough for some of the the legends. I mean, Derek Morgan did really well out here. Stranger Cole, you know, to um, uh, well, you know, Derek is the exception. Yeah, he Derek plays. is yeah, the yeah. for a I reason, guess, right? <laughs> yes, I, I like the way um, Shock Rent said it. Derek is the exception. Yeah, and then everything else is it. Obviously, yeah, we, we talked to our mutual friend Chuck Ren numerous times about this over the years. <laughs> um, right. You yeah. know, the you know, and, and then some of the the more ska punk you know uh, groups, you know, will also do well. You know, some don't. I, so I think to answer your question, um, we've seen it healthier, <laughs> um, yeah. but we've, we've seen it in worse shape. You know, uh, um, you know, so. Um, but I think too the the DJs right the DJ nights have really helped it tremendously keep going over the years. You know we had um, kind of after Chris Murray's Blue Beat Lounge, you know, stopped. There was a there was a lull. Junior started doing some ska mania events, which helped. Um, you know, a few other promoters, you know, w- w- would do some shows over the years. But but really the DJ nights, I think, you know, help help it help it go. Aton and Western Standard Time, you know, I think are doing really yeah. well. We've had some reunions, um, Ocean Eleven reunion. Uh, yep. I think really great for the scene. We have we have Mob Town reuniting with the Pioneers. I was gonna say I just I see it right behind you. There. <laughs> yeah, yeah, they're they're coming back for the first time since 2015, I believe. Um, so yeah, I mean it's um just so for the legend. Yeah, but I also think in SoCal people, and this is not even just specific to the music that we're all talking about, but people are jaded. I also think it's really tough to get people out of the house. You know, it's it's easier to stay home and watch <laughs> streaming, right? Um, it's also yeah. really difficult to get from the west side of LA to, you know, the east side or to Orange County because of traffic. There's a lot of reasons why people choose to not go out. Yeah, which, which is which sucks. <laughs> but I I think you're right though. Like it's been it's been worse. You know, like 2014 was. And even before that, you know, like the ska scene was kind of in a drought and yeah. like we're, you know, we, we've gone up a little bit, maybe we've stalled a little bit or gone down, a little, you know, but it's still better than, than we were. And yeah, I think um, like what you're saying, like the, the Latin ska, I was, I've been having these calls with different DJs and, you know, like the, the El Salvador community in the region here is like so huge wow. and Adesivo is playing, you know, and so he was, you know, I was talking to a DJ yesterday yeah. and he's like, there's so many people that want to come there, you know, and they, you know, they, they just don't have all the answers because like we're not catering to like the, the Spanish population. Like we should be doing websites and tickets and our, you know, so we're going to be translating like our festival guide and that kind of thing into Spanish. And, you know, we're kind of advertising like other options, you know, for people that, you know, like we've got camping like within a half a mile that they can walk to, you know, tents like 30 bucks versus like having to get, a, you know, they're talking about bringing a bus down and, and you know, dropping people off on Friday and then picking them up on Sunday night. Uh-huh. You know, like, you know, something like that. So they're getting creative and like they really appreciate like having, you know, these these Latin ska bands on yeah. the, the lineup. And we need to, you know, for this, it's like we don't have nearly enough as what we should. Yeah, and on that front, and Junior's worked with some of them over the years, but I mean, in Southern California alone, I mean, Matamosca and, and um, uh, Ocho Calacas, um, um, Blanco Negro, Blanco Negro, um, Rascal. yeah, Rascal. I mean, there's a number of, of them here that, that do really well. And then, and then when when Inspector from Mexico played, I think it was last month. I mean, they they packed the place, sold out. I was I was working Coachella and saw Los Fabulosos Cadillacs, who are obviously legends, and it was incredible. I mean, they were on at like one thirty p.m. in the afternoon, and the stage was packed. <laughs> so, um, yeah, I, yeah, that's definitely some some room to, to expand there. But um, um, so have you ever have you ever been close to having to cancel because ticket sales were were not sufficient enough? Um. Not yet. <laughs> no. Um, not, not never. Oh my gosh. It's like um, you know, like the issue we were, we we're having like this week is like we, we 
like you, you just can't get like a liquor license, you know, like as a as a festival, like you have to partner with a nonprofit. And so we, you know, we did, we've had all this plan for like a year. And then we found out right before we get our liquor license that they changed the laws oh. like in May and didn't, you know, there's nowhere you could find this out. And then they, they cut our cut of the liquor by like a factor of five. So we're like a fifth of what we, we you know, we were getting before, you know, so now we're scrambling to try to figure this out, you know, and we'll, we'll get it figured out. It's just, you know, we should be uh, promoting and not to have to worry about like, you know, right. this bigger right. and, and and because you are the head honcho, you have to worry about everything. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So we were we were in whiteboard meetings with nonprofits this week trying to scope out like, you know, if we get this, what does this happen? You know, how how much does, you know, so the state to do? the state change the liquor laws, right? And clearly yeah. they, don't, they don't they probably don't check. do the best. They don't job check in with everybody. Yeah. <laughs> they don't check out with everyone who holds a license. Um, yeah, that's unfortunate. Right. So, so, so the plan is to have, is it, is it beer, wine or, or, or full liquor or, or, uh, we'll, we'll have beer, wine, cocktails. Um, the cocktails will be pretty limited. Like, yeah. Um, a, a big selection of beer, Scott Brewing is coming in. So oh, they're bringing in like, I forget, like three or four different varieties this time okay. around. And yeah, we'll, we'll have a good mix of, of beers. Um, trying to get all that nailed down right now. Yeah. Um, UK artists, uh, who have you, have you had some of the two-tone acts? I mean, obviously I know bad manners are coming, but um, have you had some of the others over the years? Any members of the specials, um, Roddy or um, anyone, or has Selector played before? I know you tried to get him this year, but. Yeah, no, we um, we were going to go for all that next year. We'll see how it goes. But, <laughs> you know, we were like, you know, can we, you know, could we get, you know, like, madness and inspector were to like you know something like that or you know like english beat like we offer like we we're trying to get them to fill in for hepcat you know and we just need to get a good spot for dave and, and those guys you know because they're yeah i would love to have them too and um we actually talked to the specials manager before terry died. like we didn't know that was happening so we were you know like just seeing what that price would be and could we get that to work this year and yeah, you know, the, the the stories you know surrounding um, uh, kind of the swell that was happening. I mean, we were talking with our, our friend Roger Rivas, who, who uh, I know you know and have worked with. You know, he was supposed yeah. to produce. He was supposed to produce the specials. Can um, you imagine what that would that would have been so incredible? Oh, well, especially I know. For, yes, I know. I yes, mean, yes. they had they were working. Well, the excitement was really yeah. building. <laughs> yeah. Oh my gosh. It, yeah, it, was, that, it was nice that Horace, you know, in an interview, um, a print interview, talked about talked about that, and, and I was really happy for Roger because he's a man of many talents and is is. is um, but I, I can only and that would really had to put um, LA on the map. Yeah, in, in so far as producing, that would have been nice. Yeah, um, legendary uh, 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 yeah. artists. Yeah. yeah, Roger's been out. I think this will be his fourth festival at our. Like he's come out quite a bit. Um, yeah, we so just love, love love having him out there. Roger's going to DJ or is he is he coming out with his all-star group? We we initially signed him as a DJ. Yeah. And then like the agri lights are all coming out. Yes. And so we like I think we're going to have to see how the, the lineup is. Yeah. Um, and if, if he can go a little bit early or I don't know, we're, we're going to I still need to figure that out. He's still listed as a DJ for the festival. Right. Yeah, he did last time. Yeah, we're, we're trying to do it again. Yeah, agri lights always, always incredible, too. I, I get my haircut from Jesse the barber. Nice. Yeah. Get a Wagner. Um, yeah. So you touched on this a little bit earlier, but um, maybe expand upon it. Maybe you can put it out there in the in the in the ether in the world. Um, so what what are some of the other artists, regardless of, of where they're from, that you would that's on your on your list that you would love to get, whether it's for the first time or just repeat? Yeah, well, I think you know, like the the two tone bands you you mentioned, or you know. Yeah, especially after this, the specials like right. that's you yeah. know something I, I really want to see. But at the same time, exactly what you said earlier is like all the the legends are are kind of dying off too. You know, so we've you know I, I have um you know like Madness Inspector I mentioned. You know, I was we had talked to um, Jimmy Cliff's people earlier this year, and yeah. we didn't get too far, but. Um, 
you know, um, Marsha Griffiths, as I mentioned, like would love to get like a simmer up reunion going. Like, um, so interesting. So, in addition to the um, Jamaican legends, were passing also the two tone legends. Yeah, I mean, yeah. They, right. Yeah. If you think about member, right, uh, Rankin Roger, mm -hmm. uh, you know, in addition to um, obviously uh, Terry and other members of um, uh, English Speed and, and and specials. Yeah, yeah. Unfortunately, you know, right. which is why it's so important for people to go out and support these events. Yeah, mm -hmm. and not definitely and not, have not enough to wait until you know uh, legend pass and you send yeah condolences. <laughs> to, to, yeah. To, Two big regrets of mine, Junior. You were up there at Sierra Nevada World Music Festival. Roy Shirley uh, oh, was, was playing wow. back by LA's uh, the Expanders, and I couldn't make it. Um, and there was talk about I think him coming down here afterwards, and so I said I'll, I'll mm -hmm. see him in LA. And oh, he, he didn't, didn't make it. Yeah. Um, and then and then the other big one, and I've told this story at nauseum to various people, but Joe Strummer was was with, with the Mascaleros at the yeah. Trooper three night stint in the late late nineties, early two thousands. Um and I had plans the first night. I was working the first night uh at my at my day job. I had second night I had to work on uh, Reagan Nucleus magazine that, that Junior was a part of as well. And the third night my girlfriend at the time said, You're not going out. You're staying home. Oh no. <laughs> so I said, all right, catch I'll catch drummer the next time. Never happened. Oh, I, that, that's mine too. Like Joe Strummer is like, I had a chance and it was like, I was so tired from work. I'm just like, uh, you, you know, he's putting out so much stuff lately. Yeah. Like he'll put another record out. He'll be back again. Right. And yeah. No. Yeah. That unfortunately happens. Um, but yeah, that's why we, we encourage people, you know, mm -hmm. get out there and see these artists and support them because, you know, if you're a fan of sky and you can, you can do it, whether you're from, area you know close the surrounding area at your festival tim supernova or if you, if you if you have the funds to make a trip i mean get out there and support you know we, we, I, we need we need these so <laughs> these festivals are super important and you know quite frankly if you don't support the genre regardless whether it's jazz blues uh if any genre if you don't support it it goes away after dinosaur yeah yeah right they can't be just vocal. You have to literally support the artists when they're in town. A lot of these artists, they're not plumbers or, you know, I love plumbers and doctors and lawyers. They make a living from playing music. Yeah, no, it's true. Mm -hmm. Tim, um, I saw, I, I think it was today, and whoever, I don't know if it's you specifically, whoever runs social media, they also do a great job. So, um, Oh, thanks. It's all me. We don't have a staff. <laughs> oh, you don't? <laughs> no, I mean, we... Wow. It, my my wife April she does some of the TikTok and the Instagram. Nice. Yeah. So, so I saw. Um, oh, so we do have a we we do have like a marketing team. Like they put together some of the graphics sometimes. Okay. Like an yeah. email. If you see the email newsletter, that's what they put together. I get that as well. Yeah. But 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 talk about because it's it, well hopefully it it'll be filled up by then. But the chances are it may not. But you posted I think today. Um, you're looking for sponsors, right? Whether it's a company or or if Junior Francis, I guess wanted to, but but the sponsor uh, has to do with the live stream. Will you just touch on that? Sure. Um, so we we've got a, a professional live stream team coming down from Connecticut. They they do um, some of the sh like Mark Burnett shows, like the Amazing Race, and those you know. So it's like a really professional team. Like the guy that heads it up is in Sergeant Scagnetti, a, a Scott band from um, Connecticut, mm -hmm. and so they. They, you know, bootstrapped this whole thing. They put together a super professional live stream with, with multiple cameras. Like we're negotiating now with Pharrell's drone team, you wow. know, potentially to have, um, you know, we'll, we'll get hopefully get that worked out in the next week or two. Right. But having like live drone footage spliced into all the live, um, you know, thirty-hour live stream. Nice. And um, yeah, they're shooting like like all these camera angles backstage, and you know, this time around we've got multiple we've got the in defense of sky coming so we've got a second channel we're going to have backstage views we've got uh you know Cooley ranks and in, in car sessions that he does and you know trying to incorporate a lot of other things into it but you know what we're, we're um offering is just you know it's like uh people to sponsor the the bands during the live stream so their name will appear their company name will appear you know and it'll live on that forever so when we cut it up and share it and all that the names will be there oh very cool know? 
So yeah, it's yeah. a um, it just really helps underwrite the cost of you know these guys coming all the way from Connecticut, renting vans and wow. getting Airbnbs and all the equipment. You know, it's just a, it's a lot of of um, legwork for them. And will all the bands participate in the in the live stream? I think so. Yeah, I think um, you know we've got a couple challenges, but it's 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 minor. It's um, you know like how to deal with cover songs on a rebroadcast and things like that. <laughs> it's not. Yeah, uh, yeah, it's, it's important, but you know, not not easy. you know, we can get it worked out. We've been Daniel more times. Yeah, yeah, never, never easy. Um, mm -hmm. So, um, Tim, uh, as we're nearing the end here, what have we, um, what have we not touched on uh, that you want to make sure you get across uh, to our, our viewers and listeners? Yeah, well, I mean the the festival is um, it's going to be a lot of fun. We've got a um, World's Fair approach this time around. So we've got different pavilions for different countries. So we've got a Jamaican pavilion, you yeah. know, serving Red Stripe. We've got a British pavilion. So, you know, like Very we've got cool. a German beer garden. Yeah. Um, El Salvador, we were talking at the embassy today is like trying to put together a plan for a little El Salvador there, you know. So we're trying to make it like a World's Fair community. Um, I think it'll be a lot of fun. Yeah. Like I said before, we're right on the beach. So people can come, they can come and go as they want. It's a uh, not like some of these festivals where you get locked in on the pavement and can't leave and you got to buy a $5 water. We got free water for everybody, <laughs> you know, like bring your, you know, you got allergies, bring your own food, you know, like we've got food trucks there. We've got beer there, but you know, like. So all the above things you said, it doesn't make it incredibly difficult for you to raise the kind of funds that you need to offset the costs. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, most of our funds come so far has all been from ticket sales. So, yeah, the more people that can support, you know, if they can't make it out, you know, in person, like buying the live stream is is fantastic. We've got discounts online right now, live live stream 20 on our website. You know, um, if they don't want to watch the live stream, they can buy a T-shirt, you know, any of that stuff yeah. helps out tremendously. So, yeah. you know, all pulls together this year, we get alcohol sales. But like I said, it's a, <laughs> it's in flux right now. So we're not sure how much, but, you know, we'll get Good it. Good luck with that. Yeah um did did any did your time and experience in the military prep you and 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 benefit you in what you're doing right now um well i was a weather forecaster so yes um really? <laughs> at times we get really bad weather coming in so it saved our bacon a couple times like with big storms coming in it's like i think it's gonna miss us i think it's you know like we could, we could call the whole thing off or we can wait five more minutes and see what happens because we got plenty of time to get people to their, you know, safe yeah. place, you know. So, so why don't you have it at a much safer time? Um, it, it, safer time, but for like what September, avoid it, hurricane season? Yeah, it's like um, other parts of the year, like uh, June, July, you know, when we could have it um, is beach season. So we're we're on this little island, more or less, and all the beach traffic is there. And all the cars are taking up all the parking lot. Right. After Memorial Day, we get the entire place to ourselves. So we sense. have all the parking. We get buildings that are open, you know, like, like anyway, they, they kind of roll out the red carpet for us. Right. Nice. And the weather is generally better in September than, you know, having it in June yes. or July. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's well, you, you know, with that experience as a weather for forecaster, you can always, you know, as a backup plan, always, always, uh, you know, do it on TV, right? Or radio? <laughs> I use my hands a lot. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> um, nice. Well, it's a uh, website, right? People can still buy tickets, clearly. Um, and, and website's great. I, I love the imagery um, for this year as well. And, and kudos for the representing, what, nine, at least nine countries. Um, so yeah. super, super excited and envious for those that are going to attend and and again, Tim, congratulations for um, everything you're doing. Nine years on growing. Yeah. Yeah. Well, we're, you know, we're planning the 2024, like right after this. So, yes. you know, we need an MC. I don't know, Junior, if you want to come out and like, love, to, <laughs> love to have you out and uh, like, we'll be in touch. Like, bags. <laughs> <laughs> if you're available, like September 2024, like just bl block off your calendar if you can. Right. Of course, it's it's usually mid ish, <laughs> right? Mid yeah, mid, we've been doing mid September. Yeah, yeah right. I'd, I'd never miss the opportunity. <laughs> no, that would be nice indeed. Yeah, yeah. Um, well, on that note, yeah, Tim, thank you. Um, give give your wife April our, our best and tell her uh, congratulations again. 
and um, and really good luck yeah. and urging fans to go out and support. Oh, thank you, guys. I really appreciate it. Thank you yeah. for your time on this. And, and yeah. your support can be in theory has to be practical. <laughs> That's true. That is, you go and support the artists and don't wait until the legend become um, ancestors in you, you know. Yeah, Wish yeah. you had seen them in concert. It's true. Yeah. Not, not Thank you the, for, for all you do on that side. Legends, as well. A lot of the legends, that's how they make their living. Yeah. By performing. Indeed. Even yeah. their senior aid. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Thank you, Junior. So you really have to support them. And uh, thank you, everyone out there, for your ongoing support. Speaking of support, and please subscribe to this podcast series mm -hmm. and our YouTube channel. Uh, follow us at History of LA Ska on Instagram. And please join our Facebook group. You can follow this gentleman at Junior Francis. Mm -hmm. And this series is produced by Rockery Radio at Rockery underscore radio. Thanks, Eric. Indeed. And your Tim. Discipline and your hard work. <laughs> and he's one of the most disciplined persons I know in my entire life. <laughs> wow. <laughs> I think we make a yes. good team, Junior. Yes, uh, yes. Tim, until next time, thank you. Good luck with everything. Um, and we appreciate the support, everyone. Mm -hmm. Please get out there and support Supernova, support live music, and be well. Until next time, take care. Big respect, Tim. Indeed. Oh, thank you, everybody. Take, take care. care.